I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about, is my ex avoidant? So, many people that are new to my channel have no idea what attachment theory is. They don't know what I mean when I say avoidant. There are different types of attachment styles. Basically, we form bonds with our caregivers in our childhood, primarily the first two to three years. As we develop, we tend to be either more secure or more insecure. Now, you have extremely secure people, it's like a scale, and then you have extremely insecure people. You have secure, anxious, avoidant, and disorganized. Avoidant people often grew up in homes that they didn't get a lot of love. Their needs were shut down. When they went to their caregivers for love, they often were ignored or neglected or they weren't given a lot of affection, picked up, tickled, played with, fed. Those needs were unmet or not as met as the people that tend to be more secure. Now, why do we talk about this? Because that attachment that we form with our caregivers is often repeated in our romantic relationships. Many of the struggles that we have in our childhood with our, with our parents are gonna be the same struggles that we have with our romantic partners. And unless you deal with it, unless you take a good hard look at those issues and figure out what happened, you're going to repeat them. This is why I created the knowledge workbooks and the creative healing course, go check them out. There is tons of information in there that will truly help you heal and get more confident in all of your romantic relationships. True confidence, not fake it till you make it. The real stuff, the real work that everybody talks about, that's what's in those products. Because I really am big on working through those issues to have healthy amazing relationships. And the more you understand why the way people are, the more you know how to be a good partner for them and to make our connection stronger and last. Because there's a good chance that your needs are going to be the opposite of your partner's needs, okay? And if you have an anxious attachment style, while we have similar needs to an avoidant, it's not completely different, there are many things that they want or need differently. Different expectations, different demands, different responsibilities, and all kinds of areas that are gonna be confusing to you. But the more you understand this, the more enlightened you become, the better partner that you can be for them, and the more likely they're gonna be able to work through things with you and make the relationship last. So, in this email coaching that I have, you're gonna see a lot of little things here and there that help you see if your ex is avoidant. Because chances are you're trying to figure out them and what's going on with them. Well, you're gonna see these things and it's gonna help you understand and have some insight into your situation. So I really like this one. Now this is actually from a lesbian couple and they're in their early 40s and they both have professional careers. Now, they have been dating for under a year, neither of them have any children and they haven't been living together. Now, the interesting thing is that they're not in a breakup yet. Many people don't find the channel until after the breakup. She found us ahead of time and she's trying to prevent it. Which is a great idea. So if you're ever in a situation where you feel the breakup is coming, sign up for a coaching. Let's talk about it and get you a plan in place 
to decrease the likelihood of that happening. And if it does happen, handling it in a way that you're going to be more likely to turn it around without making mistakes. So she goes on to say, I have an anxious attachment style, but I have been working on myself through the years and got a breakthrough when I found your channel three or four years ago. I haven't figured out which attachment style my girlfriend has, but she speaks good about her childhood. Okay, so had she been doing the knowledge workbooks or the creative healing course, it would be very easy to figure out what her girlfriend's attachment style is. This one is not difficult at all. So she's been watching the channel, but I don't know how much work she has been doing. She said she found us three or four years ago. Maybe she just didn't really get interested in the channel at that time. But I can tell you the creative healing course especially would make this very simple to figure out. All right. So from the get go, we can see that the girlfriend speaks good about her childhood, but Margaret has taught me to look deeper. Okay. And she helped me see through the years, many avoidance will say they had a good childhood. They distort reality. Okay. They distort reality because reality is too painful. So in a way they kind of gaslight themselves. Okay, they want to believe they have a good relationship with their family. Then you ask a couple of questions and you realize real fast, no, it wasn't good. And you don't wind up avoiding if the family life was good. Okay, I'm going to say that again. You don't wind up avoiding if your childhood was good. Am I going to get into it? <laughs> Trust me, it doesn't work like that. All right, so. She says, at the same time, it's clear she has never, quote unquote, done the work. She's only had short relationships up to one and a half years. Okay, so that's a red flag right there. Has never been living with a girlfriend. Got another red flag here. She's very individualistic and I suspect she's emotionally immature. So we have three red flags in a row right here. All of these are pointing to probably having an avoidant attachment style alone. You can't say it, but when you're looking at all these things together, my, my brain is already looking. My, my wheels are already turning. So let's go on. Let's see what else is going on here. When we started dating, we had sweet dates and communicated well, and her interest level was high on one date. After we had had dated for about a month, I was unlucky and didn't catch that she wanted to talk about a situation with her family. It was past midnight. We were in bed and I was half sleeping. The next day she acted cold and was nitpicking on everything I said. Okay. So there's some poor communication right there. She could have said, Hey, I really wanted to talk to you about something that was bothering me. And I wanted to talk about it last night. I felt like you weren't really listening or didn't feel like you cared about what I was saying. Something like that would have shown more secure of attachment style. It would have been a healthier way of going about it than getting angry and lashing out. When I asked her if everything was okay, she said, yes. Okay. Here's another sign of an avoidant watch. She says everything's okay, but. Several weeks later, she told me why she got upset. Okay. So there's some poor communication going on right there that obviously that indicate more signs of an avoidant attachment style. And I made sure to validate her feelings and told her that I just didn't notice and that she could always tell me if something was on her mind that she wanted to talk about. Great. And that's exactly what a healthy person does. Despite this, she continued to be lukewarm on the next dates and backed away. And when she backed away, I backed away. She eventually noticed and asked if I had lost interest. And the healthy thing would be to say, you know what? I've been feeling a bit confused about the situation myself. seems like something's bothering you, but I don't want to force you to talk about it or something along those lines. We met up and talked. 
she admitted she had been half-hearted. She also said that her feelings for me was so strong and she would make changes and make me a priority from now on. Okay, so this is another sign of an avoidant. She was lukewarm until she started feeling the, that you were pulling away, started to feel the space, and now all of a sudden she's motivated. But will she stay motivated? But this is kind of like, you see her pulling away, and now the girlfriend is realizing it and doing something about it. This is why I'm saying no contact works, no reaching out works. When you're in a relationship or a breakup, and you feel like things are falling apart or things have ended. We continued dating and it was she who initiated us going from dating to in a relationship. And it was she who said, I love you first. This is big in my country. Okay. And this is also signs of an avoidant. They often say that they love you early on in a relationship and it feels pretty early here. What worries me is that while I make sure to validate her feelings and show interest for her and her hobbies, she is making all the mistakes in the book. It's kind of my way or the highway. Another trait of an avoidant. They often have that attitude. And she is often on duty to tell me that my hobbies or something I'm excited about is boring. Well, that isn't really healthy either. Imagine you really love something and your partner calls it boring. They don't want to be interested in it. It's kind of like squashing who you are and your identity. When they're not excited about the things that you really love or enjoy, it's kind of like they're taking over the relationship. This is about me. No, that's not healthy. It should be about two people that have their own interests. And both people make an effort to be interested in each other's interests. You don't have to really love it, but if your partner is really passionate about something, just go along with them at least sometimes to make them feel like they, you care about them. And if they're not doing the same for you, you have to open up and say it. You don't want to pressure them, but you want to let them know how you feel too. And of course, I'm not talking about while you're in no contact or anything like that. I'm talking about when you're in a relationship. Remember, they're not in a breakup. They haven't broken up yet. You can see there's issues going on, but it hasn't ended yet. If I express the smallest need, she gets defensive and upset and exaggerates the situation probably because she doesn't want to do it. And that's why she's acting like that. And if I make the smallest mistake, for example, an innocent joke, when she's not in the mood, it's the end of the world. Okay, that sounds like irritability. Maybe there's some depression going on there. I know it's a bit of a stretch, but something to consider. One time she got upset she said she was afraid because she loved me so much and she was afraid to hurt my feelings. And she says she gets upset because she feels misunderstood. Well, if you're not communicating and not doing your part to communicate, it's really easy to get misunderstood because she's not giving her the information to understand her. Another sign of an avoidant. She can switch from hot to cold from one day to the next, but she still initiates dates, even on the cold days, talks about the future, at least on the warm days, is cuddly and sweet. So far, I have not lost emotional self-control or acted insecure. Great job. Great job. You'd be tested here. You could already see that this woman would be testing you when she's getting upset, when you're just trying to laugh or joke or be playful with her. But this hot and cold behavior, especially the nitpicking on the cold days, hurts my feelings and self-confidence. And who wouldn't have their feelings hurt by to constantly feel be picked at by your partner, especially if you're trying to be playful and fun with them? I find the situation confusing. 
Can you give me some insights on why her feelings seem to be all over the place? Okay, well, like I said earlier, attachment is often correlated with mental health issues. Many avoidants struggle with anxiety and depression and trauma. When you're traumatized and you're struggling with depression, you're often irritable, nitpicking, grumpy, lashing out, impatient. All of those things go together. So that's why I'm also thinking maybe her partner is depressed. So what do you do in this situation? Well, you have to express yourself, but also be patient as well, because if you put too much pressure on your partner, they're going to shut down and back away. At the same time, you can't just tolerate being mistreated and her lashing out to you all the time. So you're going to have to learn to find a place within yourself where you can set a healthy boundary and express it and realize that when you do, they're probably going to need some time by themselves to process it and back off from you because that is often going to happen with an avoidant in this situation. And the other thing here is that you haven't even been together a year yet, so you don't really know what she's like yet. It takes time to get to know somebody and for their attachment issues to come out. So you don't know if this is her general affect a lot of the time. Maybe she's struggling with somebody. Maybe she's depressed. Maybe she's stressed out with work. You know, you got to find out what's going on with her, but you also don't want to pressure either. So you want to find out if she's going to be a good partner for you. At this point, you can see there are some red flags and she's probably got an avoidant attachment style. So you need to think about, is that going to work for you? Everybody's different. Many people can handle being with an avoidant, especially when you're emotionally centered and you've done the stuff, you've done the work, like the creative healing course, especially because it's going to be challenging to be with an avoidant. It takes emotional self-control and it takes an ability to be patient and sit with lots of uncertainty and sometimes unmet needs. So, each person has to find what they're looking for in a partner and only they can figure that out for themselves. But the more balanced you are with yourself and the more patient you are in trying to get to know somebody, the better off you're going to be in figuring out if they're right for you. But as you can see in this specific example, uh, email coaching, there were a lot of different things that came through in this partner's behavior that's showing she's probably going to be avoidant. I'd be very surprised if she didn't have an avoidant attachment style. I'd be surprised if she wasn't struggling with some depression, maybe some trauma, but she's still at the point, the partner is still at the point where she's still saying, I have a good childhood. I had a good childhood. So if you still think you had a good childhood, that tells me she probably hasn't even considered that things weren't so great. And that's why she's struggling in her life with her issues and her mental health and all of these things. But you have to educate yourself. You have to protect yourself because when you're getting to know somebody, they're a stranger. And a lot of times we think they have our, the, our best interest in mind. Many times they don't. And you're not going to know that because in the beginning, they're going to hide it. This is why I'm big on taking your time to find out if somebody's a good partner for you. If you don't, you're going to wind up with a broken heart. Okay. And I don't like to see anybody go through that pain and that hurt that we experience in a breakup. So stay focused on personal growth, educate yourself, do the work and take this slow. You're not in a breakup yet. You're probably going to have a breakup soon. Even if you're on your best behavior and you don't pressure her, she's too irritable with you and getting too angry and irritated by little things, just joking in playful ways and saying she's feeling misunderstood already. So I just kind of wonder if she's going to be able to give enough emotionally or that she has the skills and ability to do a long-term relationship. Remember, she's in her 40s and her longest relationship is a year and a half. It's not very long when you're that age. Uh, she's individualistic. 
she's emotionally immature, she's never lived with a partner before, uh, all of these things, poor communication. Remember, she had shut down about an issue for several weeks, even though she said she was fine. So all of these are signs of an avoidant partner and whether or not you want to date an avoidant, that's up to you. Each and every person could decide that for themselves and if it's worth it for themselves. So hopefully this one's been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get my help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. You can get my creative healing course and my workbooks there. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and I will talk with you soon.